Part two of Tribal Week is here. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code itresolves 10 yp for 10% off your entire purchase. What is going on everybody and welcome to part two of Obscure Tribal Week. If you do not know what this week is, essentially we have asked all of you fine folks to create some obscure tribal decks. Now that does not include things like elves, goblins, any of the mainstream archetypes we're looking for a little bit off the wall today. Uh, and the first one was actually very off the wall because it was literally weird tribal, uh, which was fantastic. Unfortunately though, we didn't actually get any wins. So we are a little bit uh, off to not the best start, but a very fun deck nonetheless. And so I'm really excited to jump into today's uh, and see how it goes. If you would like to submit a deck for this challenge or indeed any future challenges you can do so via our discord that link is down below we do have a challenge submissions channel open for you and it is completely free to do so the winner of each week gets free uh, five free excuse me uh mystery proxies that are normally only available to our patreon people uh but a very good way to pick some of those up as well so uh, I do encourage everybody who is interested uh, just to hang out and, and build some decks and see what you can come up with. It's a really fun way to highlight you guys. Uh, this is also the Wednesday episode, which does mean that we get to announce the next week's uh, uh, challenge. So this is going to be a really fun one. This is actually submitted by Spinner Raptor, whose deck we are playing today. Uh, and the, the format is historic still. The idea is to produce the most mana in your mana pool at uh, any given point during the game. So we're going to see how much mana we can produce. Now, as a reminder, you are not looking to win the game normally. Uh, this week we are, but next week not so much. It is solely just to see how much mana you can produce during a game of Historic. Uh, and hopefully it's going to be a really fun time. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into today's deck. And here it is. Again, Spin Spinner Raptor, thank you so much, my friend, for the submission. This is Ooze Tribal. Now, Ooze is actually not that obscure. Uh, so for anybody that's coming into this thinking, well, Ooze, I mean, has some really good stuff. You are correct. It does have some very good stuff. However, we have never really seen it take a tier one spot uh, or anything really remotely close. We've got some really great cards, don't get me wrong, but they're all generally fairly beatable. Uh, and I'm very curious to see how this one actually pans out because this is one of those tribes that i feel like could actually be a decent deck down the road uh we've got some really interesting little pieces to this one i'm actually going to start at the top end here uh, obviously we do have the Great Hinge, this is just a fantastic green card, we're going to put this in the deck, but uh, really the big payoff card here, in my opinion, uh, is Biogenic Ooze. So when it enters the battlefield, you get a 2-2 green ooze creature token. At the beginning of your end step, put a 1-1 counter on every ooze you control. Now this is very much a 1-1 counters list, as you can probably tell, we've got things like Branching Evolution, we've got things like uh, Orin Reef Ooze, uh, we have got the, the Jelly here, we've got Metallic we've got tons of stuff scavenging ooze all of it hopefully revolving around buffing up all of our oozes and getting them to a very very strong place that they can take over the game uh now to to kind of keep them alive we do have things like inspiring call which we get to draw a card for each creature with a 1-1 counter on it which is obviously huge in this deck but those creatures also gain indestructible until the end of the turn so that just means if we happen to be up against a deck where we maybe are predicting a sweeper or anything like that we can just inspiring call make sure that everything is safe snakeskin veil also really good against single target removal uh, and also does provide that 1-1 counter as well. So very, very strong. Uh, and in practice, I've seen Snakeskin Veil do some really amazing things. Uh, Song of Frey Elise is here to kind of ramp us a little bit, but then again, also put a 1-1 counter on every creature we control. They gain Vigilance, Trample, and Indestructible until the end of the turn uh, on the that third counter. So very, very powerful indeed. Uh, and then one of the newest cards, actually, from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms is the Little Jelly. So it's a 0-0 zero, zero for X and a green with Trample. When it enters the battlefield, it comes in with X 1 1 counters on it, but it has split, which is a very interesting mechanic. Uh, when it dies, if it had two or more 1 1 counters on it, create a token that is a copy of it at the beginning of the next end step. 
the token enters the battlefield with half that many 1-1 counters on it rounded down. Uh, very interesting because essentially we can build up the counters, build up the counters, and then kind of have some built-in protection against a lot of removal. Uh, so I'm very curious to see how that one actually pans out. Uh, as far as the lands go, just Castle Garenbrig. That's really the only tech here. We have we do have snow-covered forests, but obviously no real payoff there. Uh, it's just, that's just what we got. So, Spinaraptor, thank you so much, my friend. Let's go ahead. We're going to jump into three games. Remember, the winner of this week is the one who does win the most games uh, with their Obscure Tribe. And I think we're in within a shout of getting some really good wins with this deck. So let's go see how it does. And here we are, guys, for game number one. Now, this is an interesting hand. Uh, to be honest, I don't super love it. Uh, the Jelly is not a bad card, don't get me wrong, but only having a couple lands and then no other creatures, I'm actually going to mulligan. Um, and this is honestly a bit worse, but that's okay. We are going to keep it. Um, we do have three lands here, which is actually pretty important, so we'll see if this actually pans out. Wow, this is almost the exact hand that we just started with, just with an extra land. Um, very interesting. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's see what we can do. Interesting, okay. Very interesting. All right, well, there's another ooze. I do kind of like that. We're gonna go ahead and throw this out for one here. <clears throat> um, the only trick is if they do have a kill spell, then this obviously just dies and we don't get any kind of benefit from it. But I think um, next turn we can Orin Reef ooze, which will uh, hopefully be able to throw a counter on it and then give us that protection if they don't kill it this turn. So we'll see. Uh, interesting to see green, black reanimator. Okay, so they are definitely doing some really powerful stuff here. Um, very much expect that we are going to run into some issues, uh, but we will see. Is this God Pharaoh's gift? Uh, it is God Pharaoh's gift. Okay, interesting. Um, I'm going to take the two. I'm not stressed about that. There's a Mimic, which isn't bad, actually. Uh, I am going to go ahead and throw this Reef Orin Reef Ooze out first, uh, just to make sure we guarantee we've got an extra counter here. And that also lets us go ahead and attack in pretty safely. Um, very curious to see how this game plays out, because truth be told, if they do get something like a Jenga Taxus down, we are going to be struggling, going to be struggling for sure. Um, unless we can just outpower, but I highly doubt that we can. <laughs> Um, and they can sacrifice this next turn to get that God Pharaoh's gift. So we are going to have some problems. We'll see. Um, all right. <clears throat> so what can we do? I think branching evolution might just be the play. Uh, what this does for us is provide a lot of more, a lot more long-term power. Um, and I think that's actually going to be the, the key to potentially winning this game. I think it's going to be very difficult to, but the idea being that if we can get long-term power out, we can just outpower things like Jenga Taxis. Um, hopefully. Hopefully. Uh, this These Death Touchers are going to be a bit of a problem, but thankfully, again, the Jelly just kind of splits at some point, uh, which provides us with some answers here. Um, and hopefully what we can do is maybe drop the Great Hinge. If we draw a land, we can drop the Great Hinge and then just throw out the Metallic Mimic. Um, but we'll see. Uh, I'm very, very interested to see how this goes. They've got Shieldred out as well, which is scary. Ugh, I don't like this. I don't like this. Spinner after. I'm hoping. I am very much hoping. Uh, I believe in us. But they can sacrifice this and go ahead and get that... That, uh... God Pharaoh's gift. Oh, they do have to have six or more creatures in their graveyard. Pardon me, but I believe they do. Uh, ooh. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Um, huh. That's very interesting. Uh, okay. Well, I really wish we had a scavenging ooze because we can start eating things out of their graveyard right now, which would be kind of amazing. Uh... All right, let's see. Let's one, two, three, four, five. Uh, they don't have that sixth creature yet. So I'm actually kind of thinking we don't play into that quite yet. Um, I'm going to do this. Um, we're going to say ooze, of course. And we're going to pass. Um, now, this doesn't seem like a great play, I'll be honest, but we are holding them off from being able to just throw this out. Now, it depends on what they draw here, if they can do it or not. Ooh, okay. Well, that's scary as crap. Um, all right. They're going to attack in for one. Uh, this does allow them, if they would like, 
to draw and discard a card. I'm gonna let him. Um, at the beginning of each upkeep, keep okay. But they don't. They still don't have the mana to do everything that they want this turn. So that's actually kind of nice. All right, let's do this. Um, let's attack here. Uh, ooh, we should have attacked with the uh, whoops, with the Orin Refuse as well. All right. Um. Sure. We're gonna do this. Just getting a land, unfortunately, no big deal, but that does keep us. So what we should have done there is attacked also with the Orin Refuse. That was a bit of a mistake, but here, I mean, I think we're just gonna lose here. I don't really think there's a lot that we can do. Um, they just have so many powerful things at this point with the Scarab God, but not only that, they are gonna be able to get God Pharaoh's gift out. Um, so, and there's an Elish Norn as well, so they could clear our board, essentially. Uh, ugh. Man, Spinner Raptor, what a tough matchup, to be honest. Um, I mean, a very sick matchup, for sure, but... Uh, yeah, there's not much we can do there. Sure, sure, sure. And this at the beginning of combat, so they have done this pre, uh, pre combat, which does mean they can just pick up like an Elishorn and and potentially kind of wipe us out a, a good bit here. Um, ah man, I thought we really had a, a good shot here because we did have a decent start, albeit a sim a, a slightly slower start than maybe we would want. But uh, I do think that we are just kind of unfortunately out of this game. All right. Uh, I'm assuming they get Elish Norn. Yeah, that takes out a lot of our board and pumps theirs up quite a bit. Uh, and I think it's safe to say we've we've lost. I'm not doing the math, but I'm assuming. Yeah, there we go. All right. Well, unfortunately, that is game one spinner after a loss. But let's see if we can get game two. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. Uh, and do we like this hand? <sighs> not a lot, but I'm assuming we'll probably draw some stuff. I don't know. We're going to keep. Last time we mulliganed and it didn't go super well, so we're going to try and do a little bit of a better job this time. Uh, the Song of Fraelis could be very helpful. And are we against another... We're against another reanimator deck. Oh no! <laughs> yep, Dracuseth is in there. That's scary. Uh, third Inspiring Call. That's a little scary as well. Uh, we're going to go Ooze and uh see how this goes <laughs> unfortunately spinner after we are against some very uh heavy opposition in in this realm but you know what we'll figure it out i i believe in us i think we can do it um i'm gonna do this i think first uh and then wait until next turn probably throw this out for uh, at least two if we can get three I'm, I'd like to and then we have inspiring call uh, to hopefully refill our hand and get a little bit more action um, okay uh, that's actually not I mean it's good don't get me wrong but it's not gonna you know destroy us by any means um, no attacks by the opponent okay uh, so let's do this we're gonna do this. I'm actually a little surprised they didn't attack. Um, I guess they want to protect Rowan, um, but I kind of figured they could they could probably get away with the attack just because I don't think we would trade off a metallic mimic for a Stitcher supplier. Well, and there's Draki Seth. <laughs> okay. Uh, no. Uh, yep. I mean, they got it. Dang. Man, Spinner Raptor, we are struggling, my friend. And unfortunately, I don't think it's a problem with your deck. I think it's a problem with the opposition here. Um, I mean, there's just nothing we can do. Yeah. Uh, great. <laughs> we <laughs> we've got that. Um, all right. I I have no clue what we could do here. I'll be honest. Um. Yeah. I mean. It's gonna die. We're we're just gonna die. Oh no. I mean they just attack with Drakiseth and and unfortunately we're dead. Um there's an Elish Norn as well. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and concede. Unfortunately, Spinner Raptor, we're just having some bad luck. Let's see if we can get it in game three.
And here it is, Spinner Raptor, our third and final game. I really hope we can see your deck do its thing. I think we've gotten some okay starts, but I'd really like to make sure that we can make this one kind of pop off and at least see what it does. We don't have to win. I would love to win for you and see how we can do this, but we, uh, we'll do the best we can. Honestly, this is somewhat helpful to see green <laughs> uh i'm assuming this could be dinos or just gruel uh probably just gruel seeing that uh and honestly i'm okay with it let's do it so let's go ahead and throw this out there this is going to be a nice little start for us um we can get the jelly down next turn i do like playing these in kind of reverse order albeit it is a bit strange to do it that way is this Mizzix Mastery? No, it's Chaos Warp. Oh, that's interesting. Um, but I do think that that's probably the best way to do it, solely because we get an extra counter uh, or an extra buff here on the turn three versus turn two, which just means it's going to stick around, um, even as a 1-1. One -one. So I like that a little better. Is this going to be Reanimator again? I swear. <laughs> uh, we are going to attack in here. Kind of surprising that they did the Thrill of Possibility when they did. I would have expected them to have waited until the end of the turn. Okay, um, then I'm glad we attacked, but we still get a 1-1 here, which is nice. Let's throw you out. Um, and we just attack in here. Pretty straightforward. Um, if they do anything now, we get to draw a card and make it indestructible if we'd like. Uh, and with the Biogenic Ooze here, I think that that's worthwhile. Um, yeah, we're going to just do this. Um, gives us a little 2-2, we get a 1-1 one, one counter on every ooze, and then maybe if these stick around, we Inspiring Call and do some major work, but it looks like that's not going to happen. We do still get a 1-1, one, one, I believe. Uh, yep, look at that. Um, I really like that. Uh, that interaction is very cool. Alright, let's buy a Genic Ooze one more time. And again, at the very least, we're gonna, we're gonna have something stick around here. That's very good. Um, however, I think we might be we might be doing OK here. We'll we'll see. Uh, so this is kind of a cool little interaction. Uh, we can play that. We can technically attack in here uh, with the inspiring call. Uh, this is going to gain us some life and draw us three cards. Not lose any of our creatures. And then there we go. Uh, now, we could have waited and done that more defensively, but I think it's okay. We do want to finish this game as quickly as we can, to be honest, uh, thanks to what they have out on the field. Um, so here, I think the play is going to be to do this first. Um, all right. Uh, I think the play is then to attack in. Um, Let's see how they block. I'm very curious here. All right, so we're going to Inspiring Call naturally. Ooh, very nice. Oh, oh my gosh, exceptionally nice. Okay, yes, please. Um, <laughs> wow, all right. So Spinner Raptor, at the very least, we are seeing this deck do what it can do, so I am very happy with that. Let's do Branching Evolution here. Interesting. Uh, sure. So we're going to Chaos Warp into the Great Hinge. That's kind of cool. I like the Chaos Warp play. Like, that's kind of sick. Um, what are we worried about? Not a lot, actually. Uh, they all get extra counters on them, which is kind of nice. Um, we could have actually prevented that, but I think it's okay. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, we get hit for five, maybe. Sure. Also good. Uh, but not the end of the world. I mean, we get to we get to uh, gain some life here if we would like to, and I think we do. Uh, let's get you out of there. Uh, let's get you out of there. Um, and I'm not gonna block, to be honest. We don't need to. We've gained plenty of life. Like we're in a, a pretty solid place at the moment, to be honest. Um, we're gonna mimic naming ooze. Uh, it's going to give everything a little bit more power. Um, uh, okay, I see. So this doesn't, this isn't technically a Lord. That's one thing we do have to keep in mind here, but that's okay. Let's throw it there. Um, I think we just hold up Inspiring Call and wait. 
Um, I mean, we can attack in, but we or uh, play another mimic if we want, but that loses some of the output. We'll we'll see. All right, so they have to block scavenging ooze and the biogenic ooze. Like, there's no doubt they have to do that. Um, we're gonna do this. <laughs> uh, I love it. Um, I mean, this is very good. <laughs> like, uh, let's do this. We're gonna get you out of the graveyard and you out of the graveyard just as a in case measure. Um, all right, sweet. And we'll discard some lands here. That's fine. We we don't need any more, to be honest. Um, wow, Spinner Raptor. I think I hope, but I think we are getting a win this time. Uh, man, what a deck! This is the power level of oozes. I mean, with these plus one plus one counters, worth noting, we could have just been creating oozes this whole time, but we didn't really need to. My goodness. All right, uh, we finally got a win, which means Spinner Raptor, you are in the lead. Let's talk about this deck. All right, so Spinner Raptor, thank you so much, my friend. I really do appreciate the submission. And once again, you find yourself in the lead. Now, we do still have one more deck to go that will be coming out on Friday. So please, if you would like to uh, place a submission, you still can do so. We have not recorded that yet. You can go ahead and place those either today or tomorrow. Friday morning, we will most likely be recording, so we try and wait to give you guys as much time as possible if you'd like to submit a deck. Uh, we've got some fun ones, though, already, so I'm excited to see what happens, but congratulations, Spinner Raptor. You are in the lead. I cannot wait to see what everybody else comes up with. Ooze is a fun deck. Ooze is a very fun deck. Very 1-1 counter-based, as we saw in that last game, but it can be exceptionally powerful. It can really take over a game, and so I uh, I also really love the Jelly. What an all-star that card was, uh, especially in that last game where they kept wrathing, and then we could just continuously play more, but wow, what a what a game. What a, what a series of games. So thank you again. I really do appreciate it. I will see you all on Friday for part three of the challenge week. Make sure you submit your challenges for next week we are looking for the most mana produced it could be an infinite combo uh but do keep in mind that you still have to get that infinite combo off and sometimes that's a little harder than you would normally expect i do anticipate seeing some similar builds that we have seen in previous uh, um submissions I'm going to go ahead and say uh, on some occasions we may omit some of those only because I don't want to continuously show you guys the same decks over and over. Be creative. I don't want to see the same combos over and over again. We may not play those if we do come up with those submissions. So just as a heads up to everybody, uh, in the interest of fairness as well for everybody else who's not going to be doing infinite combos. So let's see how it goes, guys. It should be a very fun time, and I will see you guys very soon on Friday for part three of the challenge week.